So our League One adventure of Blackburn Rovers has come to an end and now we can start looking forward to the return of some championship football at Ewood Park. But of the current couple of players on the books at Blackburn Rovers, who's going to stay, who's going to go as we look forward to the start of the 2018-2019 season? <laughs> That's right folks, back once again with another video, but this time it's an updated buy, keep or sell. We can call this end of season 2017-2018 buy, keep or sell. So we're going to go through the whole roster of the players that are on our books, whether they are the actual uh, players owned by Blackburn Rovers or the loanies that we had on the, on the cards at the end of the season. So we're going to go right from the goalkeepers all the way through to the strikers and I'll give you a bit of a summary at the end of it. So let's waste no more time and jump straight in with the goalkeepers. So our three first team goalkeepers are obviously David Raya has been number one throughout the season. Jason Lautweiler was brought in at the start of the season and young Andrew Fisher has come through the academy. Now, to be honest with you, there's no real changes here. I'll keep all three of them. Uh, David Raya is a quality number one and he's been pretty much one of the main reasons why we came through at the top end of the table this season. Uh, Jason Lautweiler, obviously only really a couple, couple of games for him, mainly in the cup. Uh, he did uh, feature in that Charlton defeat towards the end of the season. And Andrew Fisher, again, he took part in the Checker Trade Cup this season. Uh, as for next season, uh, obviously I don't, I don't expect Blackburn Rovers to invest in a new goalkeeper. I think they'll keep these top two anyway, Lautweiler and uh, David Ryar. Uh, Fisher may, may get a, a chance to go out on loan. Um, but to be honest with you, I don't think, I don't see any changes. Um, and uh, again, I think we're going to be participating in the, the Checker Trade Cup. Uh, but more... Uh, on the lines of the under 23s next season, unless those rules have changed. So it's for me, I'm going to be keeping uh, David Raya, keeping uh, Jason Latweiler, and obviously keeping uh, Andrew Fisher because it's obviously no brainer, really. You're not, there's no point changing anything here unless something ridiculous happens. Maybe uh, we'll get some funny money offer for David Raya, and in that case, um, I would not, I would not rely on Jason Latweiler being number one. I'll be, I'll be looking to. Um, I'll be looking to, to bring in somebody else. There was a small rumour floating around on social media of us linking us to, uh, is it Frank Fielding uh, from Bristol City? Um, and that was actually for a, quite a hefty bit of change. It was probably around about £400,000 uh, mark, but I think that rumour, uh, actually, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I think it was from the official Bristol City uh, Facebook page. But um, obviously, I think that rumour's died down a bit. Um, and uh, fair, fair dues because I, I, I don't want why bring in an extra goalkeeper unless you're going to sell one and if you're going to bring one in I don't think I'm not sure of Frank Fielding I think he might have even been on our books as a youngster but anyway it's uh, it's all it's all uh, little uh, whispers at the moment so those whispers usually amount to nothing anyway let's kick on into defence uh, now I've updated this We've obviously brought in Amari Bell and uh, Paul Downing is now not on loan He's here on the real deal. But anyway, so let's take a look. Obviously, we start with Sam Hart, youngster, brought in in the January transfer, for, transfer window. Then he was loaned out, I believe, to Rochdale this season. Um, you know, he's not really going to get much game time at the moment with Amari Bell and Derek Williams still on the books. So, to, for me, I will still keep him. He's, you know, a Liverpool product of, of their academy. I still think, I think League One is a, is a good level for him. So, I'll probably... Uh, if I was in charge, I would let him go out on loan uh, to uh, yet another League One champion, Elite League One side, like he did last season with Rochdale. Obviously, he couldn't get in the first team at Ewood, um, and he actually had only a few uh, sporadic appearances for Rochdale. Let's move on to Paul Caddis now, the right back. Um, to me, I think there was a lot better quality out there at right back, and I've even got some questions about Ryan Naimi, but we'll, we'll talk about Naimi in just a second. But Caddis, for me, he did an okay job this season when he was called upon. But when you look at his numbers, I have done individual player reviews on all of these players, except for Sam Hart and uh, Scott Wharton. Uh, but the numbers don't lie for Caddis and they're not great, considering that we came up uh, as runners-up in a tremendous season. So for me, if we can get an offer, I would sell poor Caddis. There is plenty more options out there. You know, even in our academy, Lewis Travis came in. I'm not sure, right back, it's not his preferred spot, I don't believe. Um, but he played a, a, a good job. And we are now stepping up to a new level. We're back into the championship. And I think we need to uh, improve. Uh, it's definitely down the right-hand side. I think Amari Bell could be a bit of a, uh, a nice 
nice addition to the squad in the championship. But we'll talk more about him as well in just a second. But yeah, right back is an area of concern for me. And I'm hoping Mowbray is going to be investing in uh, a right back this summer. Then we talk about the skipper. Now, this one, obviously, for me, no brainer. I'm going to keep him. Um, he is captain fantastic in my eyes. Great role model. Um, has been there, done that with Celtic. Uh, he was with us when we went down. Well, one of the first names on the, on the team sheet when we got back up. He stuck around, fair play to him, so he deserves another crack this season, uh, as long as we can keep him, um, and I hope, and I don't think he'll go anywhere, I think uh, he knows, he's not in the in his, his young year, younger years anymore, he's, he's now reaching the climax, or the, or the, or the, you know, looking towards the end of his career, you know, maybe we've got another two seasons with him, maybe, maybe three at a push, um, and I loved it, I loved his role last, last season, it was more of a sweeper in my eyes, last man at the back, deadly on the old set pieces, uh, and very, very talismatic on the pitch. So for me, keep him. Uh, just try and fend off the, uh, the, the the competition from the championship as well. Moving on to Ryan Nayimbi. Uh, again, youngster, right back. An area of concern, just like I said, for Paul Caddis. But for me, this guy is, is still got a lot of uh, footballing years ahead of him. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't see him as our starting right back next season. I see him more as a... As a as a developing right back still, especially because we're making a, a huge step up, and it is a huge step up. I know we've been there before, um, but we need to we need to get ground running. I don't want us to stumble start next season. I want us to get off the blocks pretty good. And I cannot remember the last time that we opened a season with a win. It's been I don't know how many years. Even in League One uh, last season, we didn't win. We lost to South End. So um, we need to get out of the blocks running. I don't think Naimi is the answer at the moment. He's still young, very fast. You know, he has improved for me last season, and I think that 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 season for him will be um, will be a good learning curve. But uh, let's let's I think Mowbray needs to invest down the right side of defence. Then we have Elliot Ward. He went out on low towards back end of the season. Uh, for me, I'd already sold him in January, and I think his contract is up, so I don't see that getting renewed. Um, I you know I have nothing personal with him, but. Uh, but uh, when you when you're playing with my Blackburn Rovers, you know I need to see I need to see desire. I need to see um, you know commitment. Um, and you know he may have done that in his early times. But when you look at his track record, he is a journeyman. He's been around the, around the blocks. Um, and I think there might be one more club left in him. But it's not going to be with Blackburn anyway. So Tada, Elliot Ward. Thank you for your couple of years or whatever you've been here. Then we got Scotty Wharton uh, on loan uh, for the majority of the season. Was it with with Lincoln? I don't think that has come to a positive end. Obviously, Lincoln didn't make it to the playoff final. I think it's Exeter and Coventry who made it into the final. Uh, but, you know, it was great first team experience once again at League Two. Uh, maybe maybe another season. I don't know. I don't know when this guy is going to get into the first team. Um, I'm not sure of his age. But I think I get I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking it's probably another loan loan for him next season with, uh, with, with a club, possibly in the league in League One. Um, but he's still on the books, still youngster, still fighting and trying to chip his way into the team. So let's hope and see him in a blue and white shirt uh, on a permanent basis soon. Then we kick on to, uh, so we're going to keep uh, Scotty Wharton uh, as we move forward into Paul Downing. Obviously brought in on loan initially uh, from MK Dons. Bit of a bit of a um, confusing one that was for me. Uh, I'm sure for most of the Rovers, everyone was, who's this Paul Downing fella? But he ended up being a bit of a blinder and uh, played a good portion of the season alongside Charlie Mulgrew um, and it formed a nice partnership and he went on a good unbeaten run. Uh, obviously, we were waiting on uh, Daryl Anahan's return and once that, once his fitness uh, returned, uh, Downing was pushed more towards the bench. But I think he's a, he's a cracking, you know, he's not, he's no spring chicken. He's like mid twenties. Um, so he's, so he's got uh, some, uh, for, he's got some first team football under his, under his, under his belt. So he's a good player to have on the books. I'm not saying he's going to be our first uh, first team partnership with Mulgrew at the back. If that's where Mul if that's where Mulgrew's going to play Mulgrew, because these are all these questions that need to be answered this season. Is Mulgrew going to play at the back, or is he going to push him in midfield? Or you know, I think he's even played left back before Charlie Mulgrew. So there's some question marks around Mulgrew's um, uh, position next season. But I believe it. I believe it will be centre back. Anyway, Paul Downing, great player to have on the books. Um, and so I we would be keeping him. Then we kick on to Derek Williams. Obviously, as you look further down the roster here, we do have Amari Bell at left back, but we do need at least two uh, for each position in my eyes. So Derek Williams, whether it is Amari Bell or Derek Williams playing at left back. Derek Williams, former player of the year for Rovers, uh, ever present last season. 
you know, still only 25 years old. Yep, there's no, there's no question in my eyes. We've got to keep this, this fella. You know, he does run his socks off. You know, he might not be the fastest, but he's ever present. Uh, you know, his performances. You know, he doesn't, doesn't rip up trees. He's not the superstar. You know, left back, but he does, he does what it says on the tin. He defends, chases back. You know, he even whips in a few decent crosses every now and again. Uh, so for me, decent player. I don't know. I don't know his role next season. I don't know if it's going to be left back or centre back or what. So some interesting, there's some interesting scenarios for Mowbray next season. Then we kick on to Daryl Lennon. Now, in the January uh, by Keep or Sell video, I actually put sell for Daryl Lennon because I thought generate some income, bring in some players. Now we're in the championship. Daryl Lennon's fit. And he is a phenomenal beast of a player. Definitely at League One. He was, he was immense back into the season. There was that warrior spirit in him. And I thought, you know, thank heavens we still got this kid, you know, and he's still young. You know, I think he just broken in, into the, the Irish setup here on the weekend. So this guy, I think he, if we can keep him happy, keep him sweet, he is one of the, the, the he's the, one of the future players I see for Blackburn Rovers. I think he can be immense in the championship this season. Obviously, Sheffield United was sniffing around last season, tried to get him involved, and they finished off pretty decent last season. So I think Darren Lennon, one of the key players uh, in next season, just trying to fit him into the squad somewhere. Is he going to play alongside... Um, Smallwood is he going to be the Smallwood next season in the in the heart of midfield? I don't know. Again, a lot of work for Mowbray to figure out. For me, we're going to keep this kid and uh, and actually hopefully give him a longer term deal. Make sure he doesn't go anywhere else. Uh, then we have Amari Bell. Now we didn't really see much of Amari Bell, but there was a lot of hype uh, surrounding him. Obviously, Cardiff was sniffing around, and guess what happened to them? They got promoted to the Premiership. So uh, you know, he's, the boy's got talent. Didn't really get to, to see much of it, but he still made it into the League One player, uh, team of the year. Obviously, for his um, his appearances for Fleetwood. So the boys got talent. We didn't get to see much of it. I'm hoping we do next season. To be honest with you, I I peg him down as my uh, starting left back next season. He's got the pace. He's got the flair. But now, fresh slate. Everyone comes in with a brand new, clean slate. And um, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him next season in the championship. I forget some of these big bigger clubs: the West Broms, the Stokes, Swansea's. Uh, Middlesbrough, all the all the big guns. You know, we've got a decent we've got a decent core here at Rovers. We just need to improve it. Hopefully, Mowbray can continue. Anyway, let's kick on into midfield. Obviously, we're keeping Amari Bell. Uh, into midfield now. I'm going to break some hearts here with some of these people, but uh, we're, we're I'm, I'm just I'm just telling you how it is. Obviously, there's rumours right now that Craig Conway is going to be offered a new deal, at least a one year deal. You know, he deserves it. Quality. You know, he has been quality. But to be honest with you. Yeah, and I love the guy. I love him. I love him a bit. And it's one of these things. Craig Conway has been a loyal servant for Rovers. Obviously, he was there when we went down. He was there when we went back up. But he wasn't really first team last season. But his his commitment and his passion for Rovers, you know, is second to none. You know, but and what do you do with a player like that? What do you do? Do you, do you kick him out the streets? No. So I, I see where Rovers are going with it. But for me, to be honest with you, his performances last season weren't the great. So I would have probably... Um, you know, said, hey, sorry, buddy, but you, you should maybe consider ending your career back up in Scotland, something like that, you know, with Dundee or whatever. And we, anyway, so uh, for me, you know, despite the fact that I think he's going to stay for another season, for me, I would have uh, I would have reluctantly let him go. Anyway, moving on to Jack Payne, my, my favourite loanee of the season. Absolute garbage for me. I, uh, now, okay, this is this is actually a bizarre one for me, so... Uh, I've, I've lambasted the poor lad all season. He didn't really contribute for Rovers this season. However, when he was at, on loan at Oxford, he seemed to be uh, a lot more um, suited to their style of football. So, uh, you know, I may have got the guy wrong, but he is he's just a lightweight player for me. And now we're stepping up to the championship. Now, when I look back at his statistics for Huddersfield, when they were in the championship and they got promoted, he had some pretty decent statistics. So I'm on the boat here. Despite me uh, giving him a hard time this whole season, I don't know. I don't know if we should take another swipe at the guy at the championship. Uh, obviously, I think he fits in the, the you know the, the camaraderie around him with the boys. They seem to like him. So if if he if he's a good fit, then I would say yeah, bring him in uh, for another loan. Um, I'm reluctantly saying don't bother with him because I'm sure if I'm, I'm sure if we can't get the, the the candidates that we want to come in. Maybe we can bring in Jack Payne again for a, another shot at the championship. Then we have Elliot Bennett, all uh, diehard blue and white himself. Uh, no question, we're just going to plough through him because he's uh, a no-brainer. Keep him. Ah, so Bradley Dax, same deal. 
the the situation with Bradley Dak is though if we are offered funny money now obviously for me I would not sell him no matter what the guy gets gets the fans off his seat is an exciting player we don't get many of these uh, around so especially at Ewood Park so you know even if we are offered funny money we got to keep him because he's exciting he's going to get the players of the fans through the doors especially the championship and we're going to be playing some big teams next season this is his chance to show uh i expect to get at least one season out of bradley dak in the championship hopefully more but uh anyway no brainer keeping him small word people are saying is he going to be able to cut it at the championship he uh, obviously played there with with rotherham but now he's matured a little bit he's got the fans behind him uh no, no for me no question we got to keep this lad at the heart of the defense still young um Young enough to uh, to keep his position for a couple of years. Now we have Liam Feeney out on loan at uh, Cardiff, who got promoted. I think his contract's up. Uh, there's no point in renewing it. The guy, you know, I don't know. He was. I don't know why he was brought in. He never really got a chance. Uh, he was brought in a while back on loan. Didn't do anything, and then some uh, bright spark decided to bring him back for me. Uh, get rid of him. And then we have Peter Whittingham. Now this guy, I was very excited about when he when he joined Rovers last season. Um, I, I was expecting him to to be one of the one of the candidates for player of the season but he just never he's never really never really sat, uh, settled down you know couldn't get a good run in the team uh if possible i know we signed him last season i don't know what how we could but if possible i would i would make way and say sorry peter you're on your way try and get a new club somewhere else or hang up your boots whatever it is um so sorry you know he seems like a good enough bloke off the field i'm trying to be cutthroat here so i'm, I'm going to be upsetting a few folks then we have ben gladwin again didn't really get a chance to shine this season again one of mowbray's uh, initial signings um i'm I, I don't i don't see it i don't see it but he never really got a chance he never really got a chance so we might i might be i might be letting him hanging him out to dry too soon but for me let's get rid of ben gladwin if possible and then we have Corey evans just like daryl Ennehan in my january by keep or sell i was all up for selling Corey evans now that we're back in the championship i i you know Corey did okay in league one um there were some days that or some matches that he that he looked quality like real quality and i, and I feel i feel my only concern with Corey is that his wages are balmy and it's, it's hurting us having him on the books because he's a Northern Ireland international ex-Manchester United pro, uh, you know, uh, academy player. So he's come in, he came into the club with a bit of reputation. He's been around a while at Rovers, so he could be on a hefty contract. So if possible, I would sell him. But on the flip side, I think he's decent. I think he's decent enough in the championship and I think we could use his, uh, his nous this season. So I've actually flipped on this one and decided to keep Corey Evans for next season. Now into the into the attacking line. Uh, we have six players here, including Joe Nuttall and a couple of loanees. So let's go through this. First and foremost, Harry Chapman. Now, obviously, he's gone back to his parent club, um, but the guy was the guy was a, a page turner for me as well. We, or just similar of Bradley Dax quality, get you off your feet, little uh, buzzing little tricks. You know, when he scored his goal, he did the old backflips and all that. He's a, he's a he's a crowd pleaser. And I, li and I, li I like it. I like having those kind of players on the pitch. Obviously, we don't want to have too many. We don't want to overkill it. Anyway, for me, if possible, let's try and get this boy back in on a permanent basis or loan. Then we have Joe Nuttall. Ripped it up in the under-23s. Also got a couple of goals in the actual first team. Uh, for me, next season, again, I, 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 I don't see him making it into the first team. Uh, so a loan is probably the best he can hope for next season. So, But we'll keep him. Uh, Marcus Anderson, the Swede. Uh, rumor has that we have an option to buy. Um, no, I don't think we should buy this guy. Uh, main attribute uh, I like is his 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 stamina. He's he runs his socks off. He gives it his all, uh, but his end product is poor. And that penalty miss when Charlie Mulgrew well, didn't take the penalty. Obviously, I don't think he was on the pitch against Northampton. That lingers hard for me, and 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 I don't you know I'm not going to judge him on just the penalty miss, but the chances he's blown. All that kind of stuff. He could have easily got 15 goals this season, but um, but the amount of chances that he's blown. So for me, we should pass on that. Then we have Danny Graham. Now again, Danny Graham's getting on a bit, but uh, I think his understanding of uh, well of Bradley Dak, the link the link up play between the two has been great this season. Um, his hold up play has been immense. It's been a top draw. Obviously, it's League One. It was League One football. Now we're going back to the Championship. Um, I still think there's a good season left in Danny Graham. Maybe two. 
Um, well, when I say good two seasons, I mean a good one season, second another season, possibly as a uh, more as a, as a substitute. Um, should we be relying on Danny Graham for the goals next season? I don't know. I think we could. I think we could bring in another striker um, to complement Danny Graham. Because when you look at this, once I'm done with this, uh, you'll realise just how just how low on strikers we really are. Uh, so. Yep, no brainer for me. We'll keep Danny Graham. Then we go on to Dominic Samuel, another one of Mowbray's buys. Now, Mowbray brought in some quality players this season, and he's brought in some duds. And unfortunately, Dominic Samuel falls into the dud category. Now, I don't think this is going to happen, but I think we should sell him. Uh, I'm just going to be straight up and sell him. But I don't think it will happen. It'll be just like uh, Craig Conway, um, but not in the same sort of, you know, not offered a new deal. I think Dominic Samuel will, will end up going out on loan. Uh, next season to a League One team, um, I don't, th I don't think he will give up on him so soon. Uh, unless I'm surprised, it's just because you know Dominic started life at Ewood on an okay sort of level. When you look, back, if you look back at my individual player review for Dominic Samuel, you'll see that over his his odd games that he played, there was a there was a zone where he was scoring a few goals. He was on a bit of bit of form, and then it all went away, completely shot around about Christmas. Never never came back. So uh, for me. I would sell him. I would sell him, but I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna stick around. Um, but I don't see him getting much game time next season in the championship. And it's just, it's just unfortunate that he'll take up a, a squad space, we'll pay his wages and all that kind of stuff, and he ain't gonna get much game time. Then we have Adam Armstrong. Now I just just checked out some uh, news on him that he's been made available by Newcastle. So I don't think he's gonna get any game time any and anytime soon. The boy was good. The boy was rapid as I I thought. I I loved him. I loved him. Um, you know he was so fast. Explosive. He scored some crucial goals. If we had him the start of the season, I'm sure he would have uh, doubled his tally, uh, and he probably would have given uh, Bradley Dack a run for his money for top goal scorer this season. So, if possible, I would I would do everything to get this boy in. Uh, is he an out and out striker? Yeah, I, th I think he is. I think he, I think he could be. I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't say he's the man to fire us uh, up the table in the championship. I think he could be a key component of a Blackman Rovers side. Obviously, you know, Mowbray, Mowbray likes him. He's Adam at Coventry, brought him in uh, this season. So he's brought him in a couple of times. Let's make it a hat trick. Bring him in one more time, maybe on a permanent deal, a couple of seasons, and see how he does. I think I think he could be a key component for Rovers next season. Anyway, so that wraps up the players on the books. Now, I, I was going to do some recommendations for, for uh, purchases, but I'm going to wait a little bit to see... Uh, just to check out a little bit more on information on the players that are leaving. Because we, when, when you think about players coming in, um, obviously we're not flush with cash. Um, and I, just like everyone else, would love to see Madison and Marriott from Peterborough coming in. Uh, Graham Carey from uh, Plymouth coming in. All these quality players from League One, but they're going to come at a cost. And right now, I don't know what kind of money Mowbray's going to have. So uh, there's no point getting too excited about possible incomings. Um, from League One. I think we're going to be looking more at the bargain bucket, free transfers, that kind of stuff. Low knees, like we did uh, for the bulk of, of our additions this season. Obviously, we did spend some good money on Bradley Dack. So I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to at least double the amount of money they gave um, they gave Mowbray. And that's still small change when you look at some of the big boys like West Brom and uh, Swansea. They're going to be playing around with some mega bucks next season at this level. Um, but anyway, here's a quick, uh, here's a quick recap of the uh, the changes and the buy, keep and sell movements at Blackburn Rovers for me next season. Uh, obviously, it's just my opinion. Please don't shoot me down. Obviously, there are a lot of Craig Conway fans out there. And I am one of them. I am one of them. There are obviously a lot of uh, um, Elliot Ward fans. Well, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. But, uh, yeah, that's my roundup of, uh, of what I think is going to happen this preseason. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what additions are going to be made. Obviously, I, if I was Mowbray, I'd like to keep the core of this team. The Bradley Dack, the Danny Grahams, the Richard Smallwoods, the Bennetts. The uh, Mulgrews, the Williams, the you know the David Ryars, that core element of uh, of the Rovers setup is massive for us next season. We've got to keep the momentum going. We've done it. We've done an amazing season, uh, ridiculous points tally, and we still only you know. And, and fair credit again. I keep I have to keep saying it, but fair credit to for Wigan for for ousting us. To be honest with you, but we've had an immense season. Let's bring that momentum into next season into the championship, and hopefully we can do well enough to at least get into the middle 
of the table and maybe just maybe have a sneaky shot at the playoffs. But that is uh, that is Dreamland uh, to be honest with you. But uh, but uh, yeah, I'm excited, looking forward to it, and it's only still only May. Anyway, till next time. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I know it's not there. I've got some technical snags right now. She's going to be redoing the whole setup in the next few weeks. Uh, but it's there. It's down there somewhere. So hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.